of all the platforms that young people have to voice their opinions on, the classroom is not one of them. Studies are showing that teens aren't very comfortable with voicing their opinions in class. And in today's toxic, divisive culture, there are people who are really trying to get those numbers up. I definitely notice that some people hold back on what they say in class because they're worried about how other people are going to react. It has never been easy to be a high schooler. And there's two sides to that. You have the I don't want to say anything wrong side, whether that be to the teacher or in front of the class, or making sure you don't say anything harmful in the halls or to other people. But being one in such a divisive finger pointing culture is something most of us adults from the MySpace era and beyond never had to deal with. These high school seniors say they and their peers are self-censoring, deliberately not sharing their thoughts and opinions in class because of fear of retribution. People sort themselves into teams, red team, blue team, liberal, conservative, anti this, pro that. It's something that continues to be glaringly and painfully apparent to their headmaster, Bill Kuhn, of the Birch Wathen Lennox School in the Upper East Side of Manhattan. He was moved to write a Washington Post op-ed about this topic. When controversial topics did uh, arise, I noticed students were quiet. I noticed students did not express their themselves when it came to a particular viewpoint. According to 2021 data from College Pulse, 80% of college students say they self-censor some of the time, and 21% say they do it often. Zooming in on high schoolers, a recent Knight Foundation poll revealed that only 19% of them feel very comfortable with sharing opinions in person. What we'd recognize is that we'd move beyond simple disagreements. We'd move towards really demonizing those who disagreed with us. Caroline Mell is the co-founder of the Constructive Dialogue Institute, or CDI. It's a nonprofit that provides both online and in-person educational tools to teach young people how to feel comfortable sharing their opinions and how to do it in a productive way, no finger pointing. Our hope is that more and more um, this will become incorporated into just standard education. At Birch Wathen Lennox, the school has a prefect program where students are trained in conflict resolution and mediation to help other students have difficult conversations. Oftentimes people are like, let's not bring it into the classroom. If you don't bring it into the classroom, where are you going to learn to do it, <laughs> right? Brooke Jaffe is one of those prefects. There's so many different kinds of people that identify differently, believe differently. Being able to learn how to have those conversations, being learned how to interact with them, I personally believe is essential. Kuhn and others believe courses like this are crucial to make sure our First Amendment remains a priority. We need to foster the idea of freedom of thought and freedom of expression and do it in a way that is kind and judgment free to a degree and giving the benefit of the doubt to the speaker. Vanessa Mishanya, Scripps News, New York. Thank you for joining us this week for our look at free speech. Join us next week. Our topic is jobs in America. Robots and artificial intelligence are officially in the workplace, but they won't put you on unemployment, at least not yet. We're separating myth from reality on the future of work. Until then, I'm Chris Stewart, and this is The Race.